Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel. Please subscribe. Anne Neville, the Forgotten Queen of England. English history is full of rich stories and information relating to different people, families and the monarchy throughout centuries. But if we ask ourselves who were the queens of England, then I bet there is one name who doesn't pop up. Maybe you'll think of Mary I, or Elizabeth I, maybe even Queen Anne, or quite possibly even Boudicca. But one queen that doesn't often get a mention is Queen Anne Neville, wife to King Richard III. Join us today as we look into the life and death of Anne Neville, the Queen of England forgotten by many. Anne was born on the 11th of June 1456 in Warwick Castle to Richard Neville, the 16th Earl of Warwick, and Anne Beecham, the wealthy Beecham dispenser heiress. On Beecham's death, her inheritance would then be shared equally between Anne and her sister Isabel. Now, although Anne was born within the walls of Warwick, she actually spent her childhood in North Yorkshire at Midlam Castle. It was here that Anne and her sister met Richard of Gloucester, the youngest brother of King Edward IV, as he had come to learn all the social and political skills required of a royal prince. Although this is where Anne and Richard met, there isn't any record of their reaction to each other. Interestingly, there was actually early plans to marry Anne and Richard. The idea was to create not one, but two powerful dynamic marriages, Isabel and sister was also betrothed to Richard's brother George, the Duke of Clarence. However, the betrothals did not last long, as the sister's father led a rebellion against Edward IV, and Anne and her family were forced to flee to France. Interestingly though, Isabel and Clarence still married in Calais, only without the King's permission. I have often wondered if portraits of past individuals were a true likeness, and maybe from the Tudor era onwards we can combine portraits to have a good guess, but in Anne Neville's case, there was not actually many portraits created of her, and one of the only drawings of her is taken from the Salisbury Roll. Although it is charming and shows a rather beautiful lady with red hair, the chance of this being accurate is rather slim. Now in France, Anne was used as a pawn in the vicious political climate of the day, to cement a difficult alliance between her father and the Lancastrians in Angus Cathedral in December of 1470. At 14 years old, she was married to Edward of Lancaster, exiled heir to the English throne, son of Henry VI and Margaret of Anjou. Warwick and Margaret of Anjou were, and remained bitter enemies, united purely through necessity in an attempt to keep control of the situation and create an opportunity to annul the marriage at some future date, Margaret insisted that Anne's marriage was never consummated. Now Anne found herself isolated in a hostile court and she then returned to England in the wake of the invading Lancastrian army led by Warwick. It was during the battles of Barnet and then Tewkesbury and the aftermath of both that both Anne's father and her husband were killed and her mother was imprisoned in Beaulieu Abbey. Now Prince Edward's fate is one of those fascinating subjects for historical debate. Either he died on the battlefield at Tewkesbury, or he was murdered at the hands of Richard of Gloucester in Tewkesbury Abbey itself. Certainly, so much blood was spilt in the abbey that it had to be reconsecrated. Now Anne found herself a prisoner of Edward IV, and she was taken to London and placed into the house of her sister and brother-in-law. Here Anne was kept for safekeeping at their house in Cold Harbour, with the intention of finding her a husband. But Anne also found herself being betrayed by her own sister. Isabel and her husband had planned to rob Anne of her half of their mother's inheritance, and then place Anne into a nunnery. Anne was even made to dress as a servant and made to work in their kitchens, you see, Isabel intended to hide her away so that Richard could not find her or rescue her. But that is exactly what happened. Richard did find her, rescue her and took her to sanctuary in the church of St Martin le Grand. He even managed to save Anne's portion of her inheritance, bargained for the release of her mother from the convent where the king was keeping her in confinement and finally wed Anne. Although the date is uncertain, or even the legality of the marriage, for there was no papal dispensation 
a legal necessity because of their close family relationship. Now at the time of the marriage, Anne was 15 and Richard was 18, and they made their home at Middleham Castle, and their only son, Edward, is thought to have been born in around 1474. It was when Edward IV died, in 1483, that Richard was named Lord Protector for his young nephew Edward, and he then later inherited the throne, becoming King Richard III, after a critical situation surrounding the legitimacy of the two princes. Now Anne became Queen of England on July 6, 1483, but she unfortunately did not live long enough to enjoy being Queen, and it certainly was not a happy time for her. You see, Anne's son Edward passed away in the April of 1484 and was buried in the church at Sheffield Hutton in North Yorkshire. This time was a very personal grief for both Anne and Richard, and it also cost the dynasty an heir. Anne died a short while after the death of her son, on the 16th of March 1585, at the age of 28. She had been suffering years of ill health, and tuberculosis or cancer have been suggested as the cause. She was buried within Westminster Abbey, although this has been disputed and there is no memorial erected for her. A more recent memorial was set up in 1960 by the Richard III Society on the wall of the Abbey near to where her grave might have been with the following inscription. Anne Neville, 1456 to 1485. Queen of England, younger daughter of Richard, Earl of Warwick, called the Kingmaker, wife to the last Plantagenet King, Richard III. In person, she was seemingly amiable and beautious, and according to the interpretation of her name, Anne Full Gracious, requisite in peace. You see, Anne had a complex life, and she suffered more than anyone should ever suffer. She loved and lost, and her tribute is fitting but it does not do her justice. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.